I learned this two weeks ago, that when we're walking by faith, we'll know what to do and what not to do. When I'm walking by faith, I'll know what to do and what not to do. In other words, when I'm trusting in God and getting my instructions from Him, His Spirit is going to tell me to do this and not that. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do this. So I'll know what I can do and what I should do as a believer and the things that I shouldn't do as a believer when I'm walking by faith. But when I try to get ahead of God, that's when I mess up because he's telling, He's giving me instructions on how to act and how to live. But because I'm trying to get around him, that's where I mess up. Then another thing that I learned is that to, I'm going to have to endure hard times. As I'm walking, as I'm learning, I'm learning how to endure hard times. Y'all know what Romans 8.28 says. My, one of my favorite verses of scripture says that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are the call according to his purpose. God works in everything, not just isolated incidents. And that was good for me. God is at work in everything in my life, not just isolated incidents. I wrote some stuff down because I didn't want to miss it. I said, God is not working to make me happy, but God is working in my life to fulfill his purpose. A lot of times, it's easier to get people to come to church when we tell them about the blessings mm -hmm. and how God wants to bless you and how God wants you to enjoy your life and never hard. But the fact of the matter is, because I belong to Jesus, because I'm a Christian, I have a natural enemy named Satan, and he's out to get me. The Bible teaches that he wants to sift us like wheat, so he's out to get me. So I'm going to have some hard times. But God says, I can take every circumstance in your life, and in the long run, right, right. make it work together. See, a lot of times when I'm looking at the right here, and the right now, and the stuff that's happening, it don't feel good. It doesn't feel good to have heartache and hard times and distress and trouble and marital problems and money problems and health issues. That stuff doesn't feel good. But God says, I'm able to take everything and when I put it together, when I mix it all up, in the long run, it's always designed to work out for our good. Just because it doesn't feel good doesn't mean it's going to not going to work out good. A lot of times, here's what I've experienced. A lot of times, God takes me through something and shows me that I can handle it. Not for me all the time. Not for me. Lord, why are you doing this to me? Because he has a bigger purpose. Somebody else is coming behind me. Somebody else is watching me. And they're watching how I respond. They're watching what I do. And if I go through trial after trial, but never give up, never give in, keep trusting, keep hoping, keep praying, keep saying good things, keep trusting in God, and he's going to work it out, that person can say, if he can handle it then God can enable me to handle it. Because we know that sometimes we fall into stuff that we can't handle. And then I wrote this and not, not, oh yeah, that's good. I, I'm glad I wrote that down. <laughs> Listen, the Bible says that for the good of those that love God, not everybody gets to experience that. And that most of us in here, all of us are, are saved, so I don't have to deal with the other side today. But God said that he works things out for the good of those that love him, and are called according to his purpose. That's going to exclude some people. And that may be very well, but people who are watching you, the ones that ain't saved, that aren't saved, they say, okay, if Mary, she went through it, she can handle it, then I need to know what she has. I need to know where her inner strength comes from. I need to know where she gets what she got, because I need that. Because if it, look at that, people are going through hell. They're jumping out buildings and killing their wife and smothering their kids and all, all because of things that happen in life, but they don't have anything. Okay, if all we have to live for is right now, then I can see why people are losing their mind. If all I have to live for is today, yeah. and my day is going bad, yeah. then yeah, I'm going to have some thoughts of suicide. Yeah, I'm going to want to go get a crown roll. I'm going to do all those things because that's all I got is now. But God is saying, once you put your trust in me, the good day days when mixed together is for your good. Yeah. And I like the way it says it in James. It says when 
you fall into trial and tribulations. Not if, but when. So as Christians, we're going to fall, but it's working to perfect us. It's working to make us perfect. So we'll be perfect, lacking nothing. That's what James says. Lacking nothing. In other words, every time I go through, I was sharing with Jeff, if I really want to get strong, if I really want to build my body up, I can run, I can do plyometrics, I can do all this stuff. But if I really want to get down to it, I've got to do some resistance training. I've got to get on that weight bench and push some weight up off of me. What am I saying? When we go through life, if we're going to be perfected as Christians, and we want to be strong and we want to be an example, we cannot get there unless we go through something. We cannot get there unless we have some hard times. So God is saying, I'm going to make the hard times and the good times work together for your good. I'm going to give you some strength training, but it's going to be to make you better. Make you be able to handle more things. Make you be able to be a better example. Make you be able to be a bigger witness. Because that's what God is calling us to do. And we all have had hard times. I was thinking about, <clears throat> when I was sitting, I was thinking about all the difficulties that I've been through in my life. When my mom got cancer, I was so mad. I was so mad at God. I was... Here it is that my mother struggled all her life to make sure all her kids had a college education. And now when I get to a place where I can do something for mama, she's about to die. Lord, what's wrong with you? Why? Why me? You know how we get. Why me, God? And then, and then I remember when I when I retired and we started a, a record label. That stuff didn't go good. We lost the house. Went through bankruptcy. Lord, what are you trying? What is this all about? This is me. And then just just last week, you know how the devil attacks. Tammy called me and was on her way to school, and her car was messing up. I went to get her. Was in the wrong place, and I had a flat tire and I just got a new spark, but I left it at home. Hard times. We all have hard times. And, and God was saying, okay, now, now that you've learned something, here it is. When we hit hard times, you've got one or two choices. You've got one or two ways to respond. You can use this and get better, or you can use it and stay the same, or get worse. That's, how, that's it. That's the only choice. When trouble comes, we can use it to get stronger. And become more like Christ, or we can use it and stay the same. That's it. So God was saying, what are you going to do today? Are you going to keep complaining? Next uh, Saturday we'll talk about complaining. I'll get into that in more detail. But are you going to keep complaining and make things worse? Or are you going to know that I'm going to work it out? Know that I can handle it. And what I like about God is that the reason why he says he can work all things together for our good, because he can handle the good in our life, and he can handle the bad. He can handle me when I'm doing right, and he can handle me when I'm messing up. He can handle the great situations, and the, I'm never any place in life that I'm outside of God's control. And that's what he was trying to let me understand, is that the hard times, yeah, I'm there. The good times, yeah, I'm there. But in the end, my, my goal and my objective is to make it work together. Why? To make you better. Psalms 13 and 7, commit your way to the Lord. I'm sorry. Psalms 37 and 5, I read that wrong. That's what Psalms 37 and 5. I'm glad I know that scripture because I sure wrote it down wrong. But it's saying, <laughs> commit your way to the Lord. One of the things that I'm learning is that I've got to be fully committed. I've got to be fully committed. I've got to make sure that every area of my life has been surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Every area of my life needs to be under His control. Every area, Alice, under God's control. And I mentioned before how sometimes we try to still have our hands on a few areas of our life. We try to have our hands on, on things and we try to control it but God says no you've got to submit everything you've got to be fully surrendered in other words fully committed fully committed and here it is I already mentioned that God can handle it when things are out of control God is still in control what I wrote down is that we have to have confidence the reason why I'm able to commit 
and surrender everything to God is that I have confidence in God and God alone. No confidence in me. Amen. 